Hey there, YouTubers. This is Don the True Cable again, coming back at you again with yet another piece of content. What we're going to be talking about today is one of the coolest things uh, that we carry, and that is our shielded toolless Keystone Jacks. Uh, these particular ones happen to be Category 6, and we'll just do a quick unboxing here. This is a two-piece set. They do come in multiple pack sizes, and I think we should take a look inside. Ah, we got some fold-up instructions, and they're in color, and they take you all the way through terminating one of these guys. And then inside the box, we've got a couple of zip ties, and then, of course, we've got the jacks. And look at that. Nice and durable, a nice uh, conductor guide holder there. And again, these are for category six. And I thought, you know, today, why don't we demonstrate one of our most challenging cables to work with uh, on this particular jack. This is our category six shielded direct burial. All right, so a couple of tools you're absolutely gonna have to have. Uh, you're gonna want flush cutters and you're gonna want a strip tool. We're dealing with a pretty tough jacket here and the flush cutters are for prepping up the cable, removing waterproof tape, etc. Uh, but the, <laughs> Uh, the jacket is pretty stiff on this guy, so the first thing you're going to want to do with your stripper is raise the blade all the way up, and I've already done that, so we put about, yeah, two and a half inches through there, like so, and then lower the blade down until it's making good, firm contact with the top of the cable jacket, and give it a couple of turns. These guys are really tough, so I maybe even a couple more turns on there is a good idea. And then to make, make sure you scored it, but didn't actually cut through. And in my case, all I did was score. It's beginning to separate right now. Only a couple of bends should be necessary to do it. And there we go. Popped right on off. Keep, you're gonna probably wanna keep that around. Uh, the reason being that it helps with untwisting conductors. And the next step is going to be cutting off the cable rip cord. This is for those that uh, want to try to rip the uh, cable jacket downward. Honestly, I don't use these. I'm always using the uh, the uh, cut and strip tool that we have because it's so adjustable. Makes good clean cuts. The next thing is you're going to want to fold the shield outward like this. Start peeling it open, kind of like a kind of like a banana, I suppose. And then pull that cable shield downward. Not so not with so much force that you actually rip it all off, but just enough that it's got a good clean edge on there. And then you'll see a drain wire and just sort of get that out of the way and wrap it around the shield just like that. And then once you do something like that, you can actually go ahead and start snipping off this uh, cable shield here to get rid of the excess. There we go, you can throw that out. All right, so you wanna end up with something like this. And again, now I've got that waterproof tape that throws a lot of people for a loop. This stuff's very tough and you do wanna get it as, you know, cut down as evenly as you can. Uh, but at the same time, you don't wanna accidentally take off your cable shield or, or nick a conductor in a process. So this can be a bit of a challenge. I usually will just pull it tight and then just start snipping my way around the cable. Once you get a few snips in there, it's relatively easy to rip it at that point, or sometimes not. As you can see, it just ripped off a piece. The stuff's tough. There we go. For purposes of terminating a keystone, we have definitely got that waterproof tape off there well enough. The next step is going to be to uh, expose the spline. Now, the spline is something that you find in um, Category 6 and 6A cable. This is not present in Category 5E, so that's something you won't have to deal with. But in Category 6 and 6A, at least with our cable, you do. The next step is you want to make four cuts. You'll notice that the spline here has four wings on it. So resting your cable jack, you're resting your clippers on the cable jacket, make four snips on each wing. This does take a little bit of getting used to. And then once you've got each wing cut, you can turn that and it, de and it detaches and it's a nice, nice removal. It's not sticking up. Some people have the habit of simply cutting the spline straight across. 
uh, I would recommend you do not do that. The reason being that um, any additional spline excess coming out of there is going to cause you trouble getting the conductor holder cap on, or if you're putting an RJ45 plug on, the same problem. That isn't, it's just going to get in your way. All right, so this is where we start with the conductor holder cap and getting these wires in here. Now, the cap is labeled either A or B on both sides. And uh, basically, it tells you whether you're going to be using the T568A code, which is the upper uh, colors, or the B code, which is the lower colors. Now, I uh, almost always use B because that's what I'm used to using. So if you look at the cap, now the front of the cap has a arrow and the back of the cap will have this bar. Two of the conductor pairs are gonna go under the bar and two are gonna be above the bar. And that's what might be different about this jack versus what you might have worked with in the past. Uh, now, if you look at your cable, we can see that we need to sort of reorganize ourselves so that make things easier on you, I recommend you put these wires through in a way that lends itself to not crossing, crossing these guys over. So set yourself up for success. Lift up the brown and orange pairs there. Actually, the orange pair is going to go over here, so you might as well get that pre-organized. But either way, the idea is to get the conductor holder cap down as reasonably close as possible. And you want to get the blue and green pairs through first. Again, they've gone under the bar. These are above the bar. And you can see that the blue pair goes over here because that's at the bottom and at the green pair here. Now, you always want to term you always want to wire in the blue and green pairs first. Once you get those done, then you can go to the rear ones. So, with some finger calisthenics here, just hold that conductor cap against the cable jacket with some pressure. Uh, this is where uh, you're going to want to start untwisting your pairs. Now, toolless keystone jacks in particular don't really allow you to easily break the pairs over a sharp piece of plastic, uh, which is ideal, but because it's toolless in nature, it just doesn't allow that. And that's okay. Uh, as long as your untwist from where it actually goes into the conductor holder to the last twist in the pair is less, as long as that's not more than half an inch, you're all right. Now, take note of how these wire in. In this case, we got stripe and then solid. And hey, it lined up nicely there for me. So. We'll put the stripe one in there first, and then we'll put the solid one in. These guys are thick. You may have to play with a little bit. And at, now you can see that we've got these guys into the cap here, and that's where the termina termination prongs will go. But the distance from where those termination prongs are gonna go to the last twist in the pair, that being right there, and I'll point it out with some clippers so you can see better is less than half inch. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, sometimes these guys don't line up perfectly and you have to untwist just one more twist than you thought. Uh, as long as you don't have to, just make sure you don't have to untwist it more than half an inch past that point and you're gonna be okay. Now, in this case, it's not gonna line up as nicely for me. So I'm gonna jimmy it around a little bit here. Um, as you can see, it's not going to simply lay out there for me nicely. So I'm going to sort of jury rig it around. Uh, this is the striped green and then the solid one, which is the solid green. Sometimes you might want to use your fingernail to push those guys in there. You know, a credit card also helps too. Uh, if you've got an old like credit card you don't need, want, or trust yourself to use, then that's a great place uh, for it. But now you can see it's even tighter from the where the prongs will go to the last twist and the pair is like right there. Uh, that That's the ideal, but you'll never, usually you're not gonna get there. It's gonna often look like that. All right, so on the rear, now we can work on the rear. So according to the B code, the orange is at the rear here on uh, the right. And this is this guy's t uh, twisted up even tighter than the orange and the, uh, the blues. So we're gonna have to really use this cable jacket piece. So just you know, untwisting it by hand is not any fun. This is pretty thick wired, stiff wire. These, uh, and I'm not talking about the whole cable. Well, I am talking about the whole cable, but the individual wires are pretty darn stiff too. So don't underestimate this cable, folks. All right. So this is gonna line up pretty nicely too. So we got, well, maybe. 
We'll see if we can get it in there without having to do another untwist. Well, looks like we're going to have to go an extra untwist there. That's okay. It's not going to be over the half inch. And get that through there. And then get that in there. Whoop. And if they pop out, you have to put them right back. All right. And now we've got the brown pair we got to work on. All right, so striped brown first and then the solid brown. All righty. And just make sure everything's still seated in there because as you, as you play with it, these conductors may come up on you and that, that's okay. Just make sure they're reseated properly. All right, so you can toss out your piece of cable jacket now, but before you start flush cutting any of this stuff off, it, it, make sure it's wired up right. The last, the last, you don't, you don't want to have to cut this thing off. The last thing you want to find out is you have to redo it again just because you didn't pay attention on this thing. So the B sequence again is stripe green, green. That's right. Stripe brown, brown. Yep, got that. We got stripe blue, blue. Yep, that's right. And then stripe orange, orange. And hey, what do you know? We got it. So with that, we just start flush cutting. Put it right against the edge of this uh, conductor holder cap and go at it. There we go. Pretty easy. All right, so the next thing you want to do is actually get out your uh, your actual jack housing here. And you're going to notice that there's an arrow on here pointing that way. And that needs to point towards the, the RJ45 port on there. So just simply place it in here. And it only goes in one way and then start to close it. Now, this is where you're gonna instantly run into an issue with uh, really thick conductors. And this cable is like the poster child for thick conductors. Um, you may not actually have the hand strength, like I do not have the hand strength to close this with those thick conductors. So we thought at True Cable, why don't we come up with a tool that is really unique? Now. If you've worked with keystone jacks like this before, you know that you may have to bust out a pair of pliers or more likely channel locks. But you know, what if we had a tool that was dedicated to the task, like parallel draw pliers? These are our, called our true clothes. And I gotta tell you, uh, this, is, this is really gonna make your life a lot easier. And if you're doing a lot of these guys, uh, after three of those, I mean, I'd run out of hand strength. This, this makes life instantly simpler. They lock closed, just open this guy up and there you go. This is for the, this level here is for keystone jacks. And then this level is for field turn plugs. And then just simply put it on the rear of the jack and bang, it's done. Ha <laughs> ha. Lock it up, put it away onto the next jack. So as you can see, our metal piece in there is making good contact with the drain wire and the cable shield. You can continue to snip off this cable shield if you want to, it's up to you. Uh, what I often do just to make double, double, double sure is I will mash this cable shield up against the rear of the jack, that's fine to do. And so it looks clean, but it's making great contact. And that's for your grounding. And the next step is you want to uh, put your zip tie and it actually goes through the bottom here like that. Isn't that cool? It won't go sliding off on you while you're trying to work with it. And then thread it this way and then you can put it down as tight as you want. Take off the excess. And voila, there we go. A Category 6 uh, Keystone Jack terminated to our big brutish cable here, ready for an RJ45 uh, plug uh, on a patch cord or whatever, ready for a Keystone Jack. If you liked our video, you know where the thumbs up is. If you didn't like it, you know where the thumbs down is. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. There's going to be a lot more to come. You have a great day and happy networking. <laughs>